everybody. Welcome to This Week in Android. I am your host, Ashley Eskeva. And uh, Jeff, you're hey, back. I am back. You're back from Oregon. Yep, it was nice. I missed you but a little bit. It was actually sunnier there than it was here. Was it? Yeah, it was really cold earlier this week. Portland slash Seattle area. Yeah, you brought yeah. the, you took the sunshine I know. I'm sorry away about from that. us. Apologize. But now you're back, and that's good. And uh, we also have a special guest co-host, <laughs> <laughs> Michael Ludden. <laughs> Um, I, uh, I have to I have to tell everybody how I discovered I feel like I discovered Michael <laughs> because Michael sent me something on Twitter and it was really funny and I thought it, he was very a knowledgeable. Than funny, but yeah. yeah, it was a little bit okay. It was totally awkward, but it was like a little bit funny and I was amused. So then I got a hold of him and um, asked if he wanted to come in and sit with us. So uh, thanks for coming today. Yes. I'm glad you could. I'm glad you made it out of court in time. Really I know, yeah. And he's he's got a G1, so he's like an original <laughs> Android adopter. Old school. Yeah, seriously old school. I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, I was in court. But let's not talk about that. That's yeah. this isn't a show. <laughs> about that. Well, uh, let's just get right down to the news. So, a lot of stuff happened in the last 48 hours. Oh, yeah. Um, Google I.O. basically came to town and destroyed everything and everyone in its path. Um, yeah, exactly. See, by the way, uh, somebody asked if you found a time machine for that G1. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so Google comes to town for I.O. and annou officially announces Froyo. So, and they actually announced a target date for Gingerbread. Mm -hmm. So we're even getting ahead of ourselves here. It's exciting. So let's... Uh, <laughs> I, I, again, I, I want to just say, if you didn't watch the Google keynote uh, yesterday for Android, the, the specific Android keynote, I am pretty sure I burst into tears at the exact moment where they gave an Evo <laughs> to every single attendee of IO. It was sort of like that part in Star Wars and they blow up the planet. Like, no! The thousands of voices screaming out at once. No, suddenly exactly. Silence. No, you it was the, the, YouTube the million voices yeah. inside me yeah. were, were screaming and were suddenly silenced. <laughs> I was just, yeah, exactly. Everybody noticed on Twitter, if you follow me on Twitter. Um, yeah. I was uh, I was slightly devastated, but after lots of Xanax and yeah. a bottle of wine last night, I'm okay. <laughs> so, but um, anyway, there's too much to talk about for me to whine about this anymore. So let's talk Froyo. Yes. Okay. Speed increases. Um, they announced the JIT compiler for apps and the V8 JavaScript engine. Um, so basically, we're looking at it swimming laps around and literally laps yes. when they showed the um, they showed how fast it moves by this um, web app that has a little Android swimming in a square. And it literally swam laps around the iPad, even. Um, and we're looking at two and a half to five times the current browsing performance. I prefer when they put it 450% increase. Yeah, yeah I like that. Like, what? It makes it sound yeah. so much faster. Yeah. <laughs> and it makes me think, what's been wrong up until now that they can increase the speed that much? It's ridiculous. Yeah. That's pretty it, sweet, especially for people with older hardware, even because they're yes. going to see an increase. You don't have to buy yes. a new phone to get yeah, this. Yeah, you're sweet totally speed old I'm gonna phone. Have, well, I'm gonna you won't even need a new phone. It'll well, be four times. They're not going to release it on this. Yeah, it's, right. They're going to need hackers. I know. To do that. I was yeah. going to say you're going to have to hack that thing because I don't think it's going to see an official 2.2 upgrade. I, I think 1.5, 1.6 is the last of it for you. It, it is. Yeah. I need an Evo 4G. Yeah, everybody does. Everyone yes. needs an Evo in the world. Of course, also everybody knows support for Flash and mm -hmm. Flash Air. Yeah. Uh, we all knew it was coming, but for me, the question is: um, Is it are, will sites like Hulu support Flash? No, you don't think so. Well, they said they they won't. It was already blocked when people tried the site, like tried the live through thing. Skyfire. Yeah, but not no. through because Skyfire had done Flash Lite, and people were saying that that it worked, and then all of a sudden it got blocked, and then it worked again, and then it got blocked. I think I read on Engadget or something that they blocked they blocked Hulu when they were running the 2.2 on the Nexus. Sad. I don't know why they keep doing that. That's interesting. That is strange. I'm trying to think how they can do that. There's probably a way to spoof it. Uh, there's got to be. So there's got to be ways around browser, it. Yeah, exactly. browsers, yeah. There's the got to be ways around it. But I just I'm very curious as to how Hulu is going to respond to um, mm -hmm. how Hulu is going to respond to Flash being on yeah. mobile phones. Well, they're releasing a paid subscription service for the iPad, aren't they? Where you have to buy the app for $9.95 or something. 
I think they probably want to do that for every... Oh, that would explain why they'd be blocking yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I was so say, then it would like, be, it would work, but you have yeah. to use the app. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that would make as sense. As long as it works, like, whatever. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, um, so... In addition to Flash, we also have, um, this is one of my favorite things. I was a little bit skeptical at first, but um, push data over the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't get this. Okay, so <laughs> you're like, I really, I really have no idea. So it was really cool to watch them, like, for example, they'd pull up a set of directions in Google Maps on their laptop, and then there'd be a button in the Chrome browser that would send it over the cloud to your phone. I have that button already, actually. And it would instantly launch the navigation app okay. in your phone and pull up that map. I have that button. It's called email. I actually just email it to myself. But and it's not email. But it's not email. I know. It's a, but they're upgrading. It's an upgrade. <laughs> That's right. It's for yeah. lazy programmers. I know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> lazy that extra step. Right. Take all these extra steps. Um, and uh, and then the other thing was that I really liked was finally there's going to be an update all option in the market. Yes, mm -hmm. which that is, is awesome. That is awesome. It's dumb they didn't have that before. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say I, I'm not going to say it's awesome. I'm going to say about time. Yeah. Like that's yeah, <laughs> I'm kind perfect. of offended yeah. that we haven't had that since since the beginning. It's just silly. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know the other you're going to be able to load apps on SD cards or move them to SD cards, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Which um, I actually already do, and that actually they're following a lot of what the hackers have already done with the yeah. apps to SD card stuff, sense. the tethering, which we'll get into later, and all that stuff. Yeah, and well, the tethering. I mean, you brought that up just now, and I mean, they're, now they're doing automatic integrated tethering and integrated hotspots. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're probably still going to be dealing with carriers regulating and charging for its use, um, but I'm sure you and you <laughs> both know that hackers are going to easily. Get I'm not going to say that for the last year and a half I've been using T-Mobile 3G for free on my computer. I'm not going to say that, but it's possible. I will say that <laughs> it's like, possible. That's why I was in court today. Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and then and then the other thing uh, that they announced that's sort of new is the way that they're integrating ads into mobile space. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't really talk a lot about ads here. Like I mean, I know we talked about iAd when they announced it, but basically, their mobile advertising uh, integrates. AdMob, uh, no $30 fee for Evo. I don't even know what that means. For the hotspot thing. Oh, yeah, for yeah. the hotspot. I mean, yeah, everybody, if you hack around it, yeah, I'm sure. But I uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's, yeah, I don't know if how it's if I was in a 4G it. city, I think I would I would want to work around that. But I'm mm -hmm. not, so not yet anyway. You could be in breach of contract, though. You like void your warranty, they could they arrest you, like, whatever. Remotely yeah. brick yeah, your probably. phone or They'll something. something I'd bad, freak yeah. me out. Um, but uh, so their mobile advertising is pretty cool. They're, they had some simple rotating ads that just sort of it, it, very inobtrusive, like they are in Gmail. Um, but then they also had these uh, apps that you could kind of pull down uh, a shade, and then it would open up to a full mm -hmm. ad. I mean, it would be either a, <laughs> it could be a movie, it could be I mean, it could be anything. And so it's not necessarily the sort of appy sort of ads that iAd has, which I don't, personally for me, like I don't have time to sit there and like play around with like <laughs> games inside an ad, yeah, so yeah. I thought it was a really, I agree, I, Nuno Maya said, I, a very elegant solution, I agree, I think it was a very elegant solution, and also, all of this happens without closing or obscure, a lot of times even obscuring the app that you're using. Mm -hmm. So you don't That's have nice. to leave, and it also is open, Google put its money where its mouth was, and said, we're gonna let this, you know, this ad system work across all mobile ad networks that developers might choose to use. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's something that at, you never see somebody like Apple do, obviously. Yeah. But then on top of that, I think there are so many opportunities for advertising, which is really really cool. And AdMob, their deal cleared today. The FCC finally. Shot. I know. I know. And they Ooh. finally got that cleared. I mean. I was a little nervous about that, to be honest. They're like, we're going to investigate this for antitrust. Um, yeah, they do get first dibs, and I, I will fully admit that. They do get first dibs on ads and things, but, I mean, if some developer really decided within an app that they didn't want to necessarily use AdMob, um, but uh, that they could. But I really enjoyed, like, for example, when he was, uh, he said, okay, look up beaches in wallpapers. And he typed in beaches, and the ads on the top were, like, for travel sites. They were for hotels and things like that. And there's other ads that have, like, 
phone signs next to them where you click on them and it'll call that different ad server or that different travel provider and all that stuff. It's really, really cool. though about like misclicks. Like what if I, you know, click in the wrong place and then I'm calling somebody. Yeah, and like, you've all of a sudden signed up for direct right TV now? or something. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. oh God, One no. click, no. <laughs> so and the last thing that they announced during the Android keynote was gingerbread. So not only did they like fully announce support for Froyo, we're now, we've already, within the span of an hour, have moved on to gingerbread. Yeah. So uh, everyone's phones immediately became instantly, not obsolete, but <laughs> instantly not innovative and cutting edge. Um, so my favorite part of the presentation, slated for fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Coming in December, fingers crossed. I mean, development yeah. soon is yeah. obviously See. subject to change. But... Um, yeah. This is, I think this means that within six months, I think this means that we're finally starting to see, like we talked about, the stabilization mm -hmm. of the sort of, of the release constant releasing. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, a lot of Linux distributions do six-month cycles. They release a new version every six months. And for something that you're constantly innovating on, it makes sense to just set a date and then release whatever you have that's stable at that date. Because yeah. otherwise, it's like, yeah, that's true. Just, it's just arbitrary where your actual versions are. Yeah. So. Now I will say with the, with the Evo, it came with 2.1, not 2.2, which yep. Yep. shocked me last week. But then also on top of that, like how long is it going to take for Sense UI to yeah. get that 2.2? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're saying it could it will be second half of 2010 that everyone starts seeing hmm. 2.2, which will be in weeks. Yeah, it's pretty. You know, July first. So mm -hmm. I somehow doubt it because uh, Sprint's whole business model is based on charging you like thirty dollars. For the hotspot app, and if you just have a little thing to click for tethering, then you know how's that gonna work? But on but on a system like when I was on when I had my pre, like they have tethering for Verizon. Um, they have tethering for Verizon yeah, but that is available. Yeah. Like it, it's an instant tethering app, and it's free, right? But you don't have that on Sprint. That's not an option to download. Plus, I think like they're just trying to sell Palm Pre's right now, so they're like tether with it. <laughs> I don't even. They're give, they're free now. <laughs> they I are. Think. Yeah. They're like two for free. Just sign yeah. up. Well, on Verizon, yeah, they're two. They're buy one get one. Yeah, yeah but not like for that, eight yeah. devices, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, That's true. That's true. And uh, but yeah, so here's the cool thing in Gingerbread that I was super excited yeah. about. They did this thing where you're gonna have a streaming app where you will be able to listen to any DRM free music yes. in your iTunes or Windows Media Library straight from your phone. Like I love that. you'll be able to just pull it and it'll use Wi-Fi to connect both your PC and your phone to each other over the internet, which means any 3G connection is fair game for you to stream your entire music collection onto your phone. Yeah, I really like this yeah. because it basically punks Apple. It basically punks Apple. You don't need to actually hard sync to iTunes Nothing. to be able to use iTunes on your Android phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they can't break it. They can't break it. Yeah, exactly. And like I'm I just oh man. Like I mean I'm looking forward to Froyo just now, but now mm -hmm. it's like now I wanna now I want gingerbread. This scares me from the the music perspective or the DRM perspective is like how are they gonna get away with that? Like someone's gonna be pissed off. Mm. Well it's, if it's your library and you've well, yeah, purchased you, you would, it. One would yeah. think that That's it like, should be yours to do with it as you please. It's but, like a sling box, kinda. Yeah. But if it's streaming and you're not hard downloading it to yeah. your phone, I could see where, because you're not necessarily it's making possible. a copy of it. Yeah. yeah. You're just streaming it from your library. I mm -hmm. still would never want to do it over my 3G connection, but that probably has more to do with <laughs> this than anything. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want to do it on that phone. It'd probably explode. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> this is a great phone, and I've used it for years. I've, I, yeah. I just bought like, a new battery fine. for eleven dollars. Wow, that pretty yeah. sweet. that's really special. It's kind of a big deal, <laughs> big moment in my life. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on again. Uh, we got a lot to cover because of I. <laughs> oh yes, your phone explode. I'm a strong bad fan. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, Google TV finally gets announced as well. Yes. Um, I'm gonna go over really quick stuff with you guys, and then we'll just talk about it real quick. Um, Google TV made its debut yesterday at I/O. Android powered, so we get to talk about how awesome it is here on the show. Let's go through bullet points. Starts right up in your TV, not in an interface. It'll change channels, access your DVR, and your cable satellite company's channel guide since it works with your current box. Your own remote will work, or you can pick up one Google offer, or you can use your Android phone, which is super awesome. Um, it'll work with existing TVs. Exactly. It'll work with existing TVs. It'll the hardware will include a TV set, Blu-ray players, companion set boxes, all kinds of stuff. Um, you can navigate with your Android phone. Since Android supports voice, that was one of the other things I saw mm -hmm. at I.O. that I loved, which was the, uh, he's like, can you point me to the direction of the nearest hospital? And it translated it into French and spoke awesome. it out of the phone. I was like, 
Oh, wow. <laughs> like Google Translate yeah. is like Universal Translator. So um, Star Trek, it's coming true. I know, yeah. All like, no, it. it's, I, the, we're starting to get into the Jetsons. I constantly ask this question, like, why aren't we living the Jetsons? But now I feel like we're kind of getting there. <laughs> like, they, well, they I, just announced yesterday, like, I know this is sort of off topic, but they just announced yesterday that they created synthetic life. Yeah, Did you see that? that? I didn't no. see that, yeah. Yeah, like, it's the, this is like a huge traveling deal. Traveling in tubes, but. That's yeah, I awesome. wish yeah. traveling in tubes. <laughs> but they created synthetic life, which that's is all I want. amazing. I didn't hear that. Um, it's okay, so back to Google yes. TV. Yes. Um, third party developers will also be able to make remote apps. So we'll be able to see what developers come up with, which again, mm -hmm. biggest point of Android open source. Um, built off Android 2.1, but it'll upgrade. Uh, uses Google Chrome, supports Flash 10.1. You'll be able to use Android apps on it as well, but not at launch. Um, and there, the demo was amazing because it was such a seamless transition back and forth from TV to internet. Aside from the whole keyboard not working. Uh, so yeah, issue. aside from the whole, we need to use the second box. We <laughs> yeah, need to switch to the first menus. box. We need to go like, turn yeah. Off your cell phones, well, poor, yeah. It was like, please turn off your cell yeah, phones. Like all the all the nerds with four cell phones keyboard? each. That's all I have to say. Yeah, that didn't seem like the best Anyways, choice. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just I definitely yes, I'm still waiting for a conveyor belt to my car too, just so everybody knows. <laughs> Um, and, and it's available this fall. So you're going to be able to go out to Best Buy. Uh, Best Buy's CEO is, of course, on the stage to say, you can buy it here at Best Buy. Um, and uh, you can go this fall and get yourself Google TV compatible products. I believe Logitech is making the set-top box. Um, but there will also be Sony TVs with it built in. So amazing stuff. Really amazing. And you, you'll be able sweet. to watch This Week in Android on your Google TV. Right. Like, I mean, I know you can do it now with like a, you know, if you have an HDMI out and all that stuff and you can switch mm -hmm. from your computer, but you don't need to with Google television. Exactly. <laughs> Here's what I want to know. Can you build your own set-top box out of a computer? Like, That's you know a really how good question. You can set up Boxy or XB, what is it, X Xbox Media Center or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but can you build like a Google TV box? Because I would love to be able to do that. Just put tuners in there. Oh, that's a really good question. Yeah, I don't know what the I hope so. I mean, like. it's open source. Probably. It's open source, right? It's open right? source, yeah. so I would imagine so. Is it so. open source? That's what they said, right? Well, it runs on Android. Remember. It does. Well, it runs on Android. That doesn't Which necessarily mean source. that the application itself is. Ah, somebody will do it. Somebody, somebody will, will figure it out. Somebody yeah. will figure it out. It may very well be. I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. Might be you. Yeah. May, no, I don't. <laughs> it will I don't do, like, do it the will coding. not be me. I piggyback off others' work. It's easier that way. Yeah, exactly. So we'll talk about the next couple of things shortly because I really want to get to our interview because I think it's going to be really cool. Um, Google is closing its online phone store. They're going to sell n all of their Nexi ones. <laughs> I don't want to say Nexuses. Yeah. That just doesn't sound right. Their Nexi ones in stores. Um, so unfortunate. I mean, that kind of makes me sad. Yeah, me too. I mean, because now you're stuck with, with a provider when you buy a phone. Which, yep. <laughs> granted, you're stuck with a provider if you want to use your phone, but it's nice at least being able to buy it in the clear. From a third party. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, they were ahead true. of their time, and they also didn't didn't have places where people could touch the phones. Those mm -hmm. were the two problems, I think. Right. It's well, a great that's, idea. We talked about that a lot. We talk about that every couple yeah. times. I mean, you know, I want to be able to go into a store and touch a phone and feel it, but yeah. if there's a better deal online, I want to get it online. Yeah. I so. saw the Nexus One for the first time in my life the other day. A guy just had it randomly, mm -hmm. and I was so excited. I like scared him. I was like, "Excuse me." It's like a leprechaun. Like, what? what? You're like, "Hey, <laughs> yeah. if I catch, if I hold <laughs> but, one of those, it'll give me a wish." But it was so amazing. <laughs> it, I had never seen it. It's so thin and awesome looking. But I didn't know that even from clicking on the websites all the time. Yeah. Well, you There's can't. Something different to, you like, can't imagine the to, scale of something yeah. until you see it in somebody's hand, yeah, like so, in person. What do you mm -hmm. think? Two years Google Store. Ooh, that'd Two be years? sweet. Year and a half. That would be sweet. I think a couple years. Yeah. I think it'll. I think it'll change. But I just. I don't think it was the right time. Yeah. It just. It was, people weren't ready Thinking, to buy their smartphones from Google. But I think once Android with Google TV and everything, yeah, yeah. it's good. But they're never gonna make hardware. Like that's the way they're able to lure all these hardware mm -hmm. manufacturers. They promise them. Like one of the guys. Like was it Sony? He's like, it's rare in this business when we have no fear of another company, but we have no fear of Google. And I was wondering why he said that. And I was thinking like. Maybe they promised them that they would never make hardware. So how would you open a store? <laughs> I wouldn't believe it if they did say that. I was going to say, still, yeah, I don't know if yeah. I'd I mean, maybe that. behind closed doors they said, like, look, we're not going to yeah. make our own TVs. We're going to use yours right. with our software. That's right. definitely, yeah, definitely what they're doing at the moment. That's so how point, would they though. open up a store, though? Would it just be yeah. other people's stuff? Probably. Well, I don't well know. they already are doing, um, this is our next news story, oh. Kindle for Android is coming to the Android market soon. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that with the... Once they start their Google, their app market that they sort of showed off at, at I.O. Mm -hmm. with like the really cool like over the cloud syncing, integration, all that stuff, 
I really think that um, I really think that it's going to change, and I think that the Google market is going to become a place where you not only can buy apps or web apps or whatever else it is, mm -hmm. TV shows for your Google TV. It's going to turn into books, obviously, like like iBooks is, and it's going to be things like a Nexus One or whatever yeah. hardware it is I that they want to partner with somebody to sell. Mm -hmm. And then it just it, you know it already is set up on your Google. You know, merchant account, and then mm -hmm. you just it gets shipped out to your to your house. So you can see that. The one really caveat Amazon. with the Kindle for Android was, I guess you have to go to the mobile website, purchase the books, and then sync it with your app. Right. And then it'll download it to there. So there's no like in-app book purchase right. thing. Purchase, purchase. Hmm. And then it's only for Kindle books. It doesn't play like open open formats of books. But know? there was a thing last week that we didn't get to where it's um, there. I think, well, Barnes & Noble's launching it for Nook, but it's called, it's called like, something Pub, and it's... EPUB, right? I think it's EPUB, where it's independent publishers can publish their own books. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. I mean, right. there's going to be a lot of garbage out there about vampires. Let's <laughs> all get real here. <laughs> um, yeah, and werewolves. But I really think that, ultimately, like, the cream, the cream will rise to the top. Like, let's they're hope. the good, let's, let's you know, everything. Um, okay, so... Let's uh, really, really briefly. If anybody has a hero, hero finally upgraded to Eclair, just in time for 2.2 to get announced and for them to be behind <laughs> once again. Um, the uh, the Droid Incredible. They're talking about how it's still selling out everywhere, still doing yep. amazing. I had a friend who tried to buy one like two weeks ago, and he's still waiting. Yeah, really? crazy he's stuff. He's about to cancel his thing. And he tried to get a hold of Verizon. It's not been well. And now, it's if like, you if you ordered it, it's going to release on the same day as the Evo Four G. Yep. Yeah, That's so they're really saying a lot news. of people are just saying, "Forget it, I'm just going to move because yeah. my contract's up, so I'm out." Missed and the you know, boat on that one. You know what's awesome with the Evo Four G? You can talk and do data at the same time. As long as you are cool. on the Four G, the Four G, yeah. not Three G and yes. da and data. Yeah. So, but yeah, a hundred thousand units sold a week. And also, I would just like to throw out a huge congratulations to Google because they did announce at I O that they're activating over a hundred thousand devices a day, yeah. mm -hmm. which is huge. I mean, really huge, like yeah. amazing, and I, like unbelievable numbers for them. They said so. activating, not shipping. Like yeah, activating, like activating, yeah. like activating boop, boop. users activating Android devices wow. every day, a hundred thousand. I mean, yeah, amazing. Course. So, you know, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, but that's across all Android devices across the world. I mean, everywhere. So, yeah, I am frightened by it too, but in a good way. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Well, we do not have a graphic for our. In it's not an app. So, but our interview this week is with David Wang, who is also known as Planet Being. And who's also known as that guy who ported Android to an iPhone. <laughs> so, David, thank you so much for coming on the show with us today. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, Michael was telling us this morning that you officially dropped your. Go ahead. Tell, go ahead and tell everyone. Dropped your uh, iPhone 3G Android port today, right? Oh uh, yeah, like yesterday. I um. I uploaded binaries for it. Nice, so. nice. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. The source code has actually been up for a few days, but I actually managed to package everything up and uh, write a how-to for it. So nice. That's what happened. Yeah, that's. I, I just think that pretty much everybody who is familiar with Android and who is into tech is. Um, they basically fell out of their chair when they saw an iPhone 2G running Android, running on Android, which was just crazy. And now you've basically ported it to the i, you know, the 3G. And we've got um, you know, we've got you here talking to you about like basically accomplishing something that most geeks only dream of. <laughs> Including myself. So tell us a little bit about the, the decision to port Android to the iPhone. I mean, what made you decide to, to do this? Well, I mean, originally the project wasn't to port Android specifically. Uh, in fact, when it started, which was in sometime in 2008, Android wasn't even um, out yet, so, uh, or the source code wasn't officially released. So um, it was actually to port Linux. And as you know, porting Linux to everything is sort of like the geek Mount Everest. And, you know, you want, to, you want to do it because it's there. And at the time, I already had been doing a lot of work on the iPhone. I was, um, I'm part of the iPhone dev team, and we do a lot of jailbreaking and uh, network unlocks. 
And I was already exploiting vulnerabilities um, on the iPhone at the bootloader level, which is um, right on the bare metal of the iPhone. So I had a little bit of background. And um, when you port Linux to something, you're pretty much demonstrating a complete ownership of the device, like I, I would say. Uh, most of us dev buy devices, and we have no idea how or why they work. And to me, that's not a level of ownership that I find completely satisfactory. So um, when, I, when I port Linux to something, uh, it demonstrates that I understand pretty much every single bit of you know what the device is doing when I'm using it. I didn't. I certainly didn't understand the iPhone completely when I started, but in the process of creating this port, uh, I, I gained that understanding. And actually, the same thing is true for Linux. When, when I started to port, I didn't really understand how the Linux kernel worked very well, and now I have at least a rudimentary understanding. Um, when Android actually came out, when Google actually released the source code for Android, it was sort of a no-brainer to uh, to do the same thing to to use Android as the user land. Um, you guys probably already know that Android uses just uses for a kernel a modified Linux kernel. Uh, but to be honest, like the modifications that Google has done for Android to to the Linux kernel aren't that big of a deal. So basically, you have a stock almost a stock Linux kernel under every Android you know oper Android device. Um, it's important to know that the only piece of software on a computer that interacts with the hardware is the kernel. So once you've ported the Linux kernel over to a new piece of hardware, um, the Android port of this uh, onto that piece of hardware isn't such a huge deal. So um, it was pretty much obvious from the beginning that Android was the right user land or non-kernel portion of the operating system for, for the iPhone Linux project. Very and cool. um, are you now? Do you, were you the only person that that did this, or did you have help accomplishing this? Well, I mean, I'm probably responsible for 95 percent of the code that is on the device right now. But I did have some help. Um, one of the iPhone dev team members, whose name is uh, so, his nickname is CPICH, uh, he did a lot of uh, reverse engineering for for me, like to help out like little jobs here and there. I would ask them to do something while I work on something else. Uh, there's another person called The Seven. It's sort of weird to say these nicknames <laughs> out loud. But, uh, That's right. Uh, I consider he, it the same thing as like talking about my friends in World of Warcraft. I'm like, oh, yeah, Akiram did this. And then everyone's like, Akiram, what? Like, and I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry. It's an in-game name. Don't even like, Don't listen to yeah, me, exactly. please. I don't I don't usually talk about these names uh, like out loud very much. Hey, yeah, but, uh, you type them more than you speak them out loud, right? Yeah, exactly. And um, well, he did a lot of um, uh, what's called the flash translation layer. It's a really, really complicated bit of code, and he actually helped out enormously with that. Um, and pretty much um, now that um, I had a release, a lot of people are actually contributing. So you know, right, right now I still own about 95% of the code, but I'm really happy to see that's changing. So. Very cool. And how long did it take you from start to finish to port Android onto? I mean, how long did it take you from start to finish just to the the 2G iPhone? Well, okay. So I looked uh, at my commit logs, which is you know a log of every time I upload the code to the to to the internet. Uh, the first commit happened in May of 2008, which is you know as you know it's now May of 2010. So that's two years ago. Uh -huh. But I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been continuously. I haven't been continuously working on a project. I've probably only, I've only made commits in eight of those months in in those two years. So probably it took me around eight months of my spare time. So. Okay, how much longer did it take you to do the three G port? The three G port only took a couple of weeks. Uh, this, despite the little details and packaging. So um, yeah, it was a lot shorter because. Um, the iPhone and the iPhone 3G and an iPod Touch are nearly identical in the hardware bits. The iPhone 3G only had a newer multi-touch interface and a newer sound codec. So, and all of them use the same uh, what's called a system on a chip that's manufactured by Samsung. The first generation iPod Touch, uh, iPod Touch and iPhone and iPhone 3G all uses what's called a Samsung S5L 8900. So um, they all use that. Um, the rest of the ports are going to be harder because none of the other iPhones and iPods use the S5L 8900. They use a slightly different system on the chips. So. Okay. So it's going to be a while before we see a 3GS port? Um, yeah. Like the, the, um, the iPod Touch second generation uses what's called a S5L 8720. 
and the 3GS uses an S5L8920. So these are obviously very closely related chips, and but but they are different in very you know very comp very you know nitpicky ways. So it might be a while before we figure it out, but there's no way to tell for sure until we, you know, look at it more. So it might actually be pretty easy. I, I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Well, you have to keep us posted on what, on on your your journey to porting it to 3GS because I think there's some people out there who'd be really interested in that. Oh, I mean, I'm really interested in it too because the 3GS is actually my primary phone. Unfortunately, I don't have an Android phone, but um. It's actually my primary phone, and I would love to be able to run both the iPhone OS and Android on it. Yeah, we've had. I, cool. I think we've had more than a couple people mention that they would love to be able to dual <laughs> boot. Dual yeah, so dual boots silly. the big yeah. goal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what, I have some questions. Um, yeah. What sort of what what are the main parts of the software that you have to actually write? Are they just drivers that you mainly have to do in order to get the port working, or is it something else in the kernel? Um, that's basically in in the Linux kernel. What's required is, well, there's two main pieces that's required. First, you need a piece of code to start the Linux kernel to get the mm -hmm. pre-boot environment set up. Uh, that would be OpenIBoot, which I wrote. And also, uh, inside a Linux kernel, you need to, you know, you need to tell it where the memory is, like which part of the address space is actually the memory, and then you need to tell it uh, the drivers. And, you know, not only the drivers for the multi-touch, but the drivers for very, very basic things like the I, I squared C bus, the I squared S bus, the mm -hmm. DMA controllers and stuff did like most, that. Did most of those drivers already exist, or did you have to write those? No, I had to write everything. Okay, that's yeah. what I figured. Kind of that's rough. That is impre impressive. That's pretty impressive, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's great. Uh, Michael, you're right. Yeah, I have a quick question. Is is it running 1.6 or 2.1? 1.6. Um, we, tr we have... Um, Running 2.1 is just a question of using a different root file system because you barely, I mean, the kernel right now is the, is the latest kernel. It's, it's essentially the 2.1 kernel. But um, unfortunately, since there's no 3D graphics acceleration, 2.1 is very, very, very slow. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to hear about 2.2 being significantly faster than 2.1, so maybe we'll have better luck with it. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. Are you are you gonna uh, are you do you have plans to eventually like optimize it to take more advantage of the hardware on the on the iPhone 3G and 3GS and stuff? Um, yeah, right now it's running debug code and um, like the worst part of it is probably the kind of hacky implementation of of the of fla uh, the NAND flash uh, that I have. So right now it's really laggy when you try to start a program because it's reading from flash. You know things like that can really be optimized. And the good news is that you don't really need to do any reverse engineering for it. It's basically, you know, people who know C, you know, hacking on it. So one last thing, I triple dog dare you to port iPhone OS to Droid. <laughs> just saying. Droid. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't have a Droid, but maybe there's someone. But uh, so you have to, <laughs> to donate one. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. you can use your, just your put it out there. Little, maybe you could use your G1 there. Yeah, you can use my G1. You can have it. And uh, <laughs> I don't need it anymore. <laughs> Once you get your Evo, you won't need That's it. That's right. So you'll be able to just hand it out. We can um, dream. So one of the questions that somebody was mentioning was, um, was there anything that you were surprised by um, during porting? Like while you were trying to port, was there anything that you were surprised by or anything that was sort of a hurdle for you while doing this? Well, it depends. Do you mean? Um, in terms of figuring out how uh, how the iPhone works, or in terms of actually moving that knowledge into um, into Android and moving into that Linux. knowledge, I think into Android. Like like, was there anything that you were like, wow, I wasn't expecting that to go that way, or I wasn't expecting this to be as difficult as it is, or as easy as it is? Well, it is actually a, a bit of a. The thing is that I thought that once I reverse engineered um, the Apple stuff, the iPhone stuff, I would be able to find documentation and lots of help getting getting moving that knowledge inside a Linux kernel and then booting Android onto it. And unfortunately, that's not really the case. The documentation for porting Linux to new hardware and to port Android to new hardware is actually very uh, scarce and inconsistent and not very good. And I actually heard from a Debian and Linux developer named Matthew Garrett that I was actually 
one of the two entities that managed to develop a halfway working Android OS on a new piece of hardware without Google stepping in, and it's wow. me and Barnes and Noble apparently. So. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Wow, wow that's sweet. really impressive. That is so, really, uh, really impressive. <laughs> wow. um, a lot of people in our chat are saying, continue the great work. I mean, really, um, just you know, keep, a, keep doing what you're doing. Um, and uh, do you think that uh, you'll actually, like when Android releases tablets, do you think that you'll actually try to port Android to um, an iPad tablet at some point? Oh, certainly. I mean, it, it would actually be really great to have Android on a tablet, I think. But, you know, the problem is that there's so many different uh, eye devices out there. And, like, I don't, there's, what I want to do the most is to actually, you know, focus on getting getting these um, Android running very stably on these devices. And I want people to, I don't want, I want, I don't want it to be just like a gee whiz, this is so cool type of thing. I want people to be actually able to use it, uh, use Android on their iPhones on a day-to-day -day device. And we're not quite there yet. So I want to sort of work on that first. Very cool. What's, uh, what's your favorite app on Android and why? Uh, well, given that I don't actually own an Android device, that's and I can't get the Google Marketplace on it. That's actually a pretty Fair uh, tough question. <laughs> so, all right, I'll let you I'll have say, that I'll one. say the web browser. The web browser is really nice. I, I, I like it even better than Safari, actually, because really? Safari, I, of, I often find myself, you know, swiping and scrolling through large portions of text, and it's really difficult. Where you have this sort of where you can zoom out on the Android web browser and um, go to a specific portion really easily. I, I really like that feature, actually. Very cool. Nice. Very cool. Do you, do, you, do you have any questions? I always feel like I'm like, I always like dominate this like right. no, question yeah. and answer Very segment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my other question is, um, what uh, in terms of, because you do iPhone development and I'm sure Jeff is over here just like, ugh, like you feel sick. Oh, it's iPhone, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh, iPhone. Um, in terms of developing and, and porting things to the iPhone like you've been doing, um, what do you think is capable in terms, what do you think the iPhone and Android in terms of the future uh, do you think that we're going to see more openness in terms of Apple, like especially with Google? <laughs> I know funny. it's like, that's haha, funny. that's so funny. <laughs> but like, but I'm I'm really curious about what you think might happen in the future in terms of Google has been so transparent. Not necessarily. I mean, they're a corporation, so they're still a, a very solid level of non-transparency. But they've been a lot more open um, than. Apple has been, especially in the mobile market. And I'm just wondering that if, by way of all of this openness that we're seeing, if Apple will respond in kind and maybe release things that in the future, I mean, like if they start seeing all the numbers that we've been seeing, which is 100,000 new activations a day, mm -hmm. they start seeing the numbers and say, gosh, well, maybe we should open this up a little bit more to developers. Like, do you think that'll ever happen? Well, I don't know. Um, I would love for it to happen, but just given the personality and current strategy of Apple, it is very unlikely. I only see things getting more and more locked down. I only see things. Um, I only see them using a business strategy that tries to shut out. You know, like their whole. You know that controversy over Adobe Flash. That just indicates them right. that they want developers to develop only for the iPhone and not for any other platforms is and as long as that strategy works for them they're not going to change yeah so. it just it really seems like they're starting to like not take hostages like that seems really extreme but <laughs> <Kinda>. <laughs> but it <laughs> feels like that they're, they're taking developers hostage and saying you know develop for us and that's it because you don't get an opportunity to spend the time to develop something for another for another engine or another os yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. it just right. seems exactly. It right. seems counterproductive. And, but it's working is the sad part. Yeah, and well, and yeah. like AT&T. It'll probably work for a while. Yeah, and, but see, I'm wondering how long that can last. Like, I feel like it can't last that long. Like, you guys out there know. I mean, like, how long can it really last for them to be so closed to the development community and still really, you know. Well, I think a good sort of thing to reference with is just the Windows Linux sort of, Windows Mac Linux operating system battle because Windows has had a they're pretty closed and they're 
still been successful for a significant yeah. amount That's of time. True. Just because they had such a large market share. That said, however, they had like a 98% market share, or 95 or something like that. Whereas iPhones only got what 50% or something around that. It's right. So 40 it's to 50. A little bit less than that because yeah. there's other. I think stuff it's like 46 there. or something. Yeah. So that's a significantly lower starting point than, but, than uh, Microsoft had. But the way Microsoft got so ubiquitous is because they don't act, they didn't actually make any of the hardware. They never made their own hardware. So mm -hmm. it was right. it true, was open yeah. in a sense See, that you could have thing, a lot of different that's right. true, yeah. hardware and options. That's why my desktop at home is a PC, because I can open it, I can upgrade right. it, I mm -hmm. can put right. in whatever I want into it. Mm -hmm. right. You know, or I can build it exactly the way I want it to be built. And so I just I can't imagine Apple going much longer like let's I'm talking about years I mean like I'm mm -hmm. talking less than a decade I mean before people the development community especially starts to say well you know what this is not worth the hassle yeah like where, at what point is it not worth the hassle I guess that's a question to ask you like at what point do you think developers for mobile for the mobile space start to say well all of this secrecy and all of this lockdown is not worth the hassle I guess we'll have to ask the developers <laughs> it will be a point when there's enough Android devices out there that people are going to say, I'm not going to develop for the iPhone, I'm going to develop for Android because there's m more of my customers there. That's At that true. point, Pretty yeah. Much it, yeah. market yeah. saturation, like they say, hey, yeah. there's more mm -hmm. people who are going to buy my app on Android, then I'm just going to go develop for that anyway. Yep. Right. I, I think as long as, as Apple has sort of the edge on the, the innovation curve, as long as they s still seem like they're innovating and kind of leading the pack, it'll It'll be, be okay. able to work for them for to a certain extent. But I don't think that having a closed system like that, which actually shuts out innovation, mm -hmm. they'll really be able to stay ahead of the curve, especially when you have all these things that, that Android's thrown at it with yeah. tethering and right. with multitasking. I'm curious also. to see what their new phone looks like, but yeah. I mean, look at the Evo. Yeah. Like, yeah. Evo's gonna it's the it's a beast. The existing <laughs> iPhones. Well, so, yeah, yeah, it's just even well, even you know, even looking at a phone like the Incredible, which is not yeah. quite the Evo, but it's close, mm -hmm. and the Nexus awesome. one. Yeah. I mean, these are all phones that are, you know, for to me and to probably all of us, like hands down, better than an iPhone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not necessarily pick up and use like the iPhone is. Right. It's extremely user accessible, but I just think that I like over time, I just can't see it lasting that long. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, wait, so this has been an interesting discussion, <laughs> David. Like, thank you, uh, thank you for indulging us. Are you? Sure. Do you think you're gonna? You think you're gonna get to work right away when iPhone four comes out? You gonna you gonna get Froyo on there? Oh well, I I don't know. I, it depends on it depends on you know what the I need to like look at the hardware and stuff first. But um, I hope to. <laughs> I think a lot of people really look forward to that because a lot of people really love the form factor in Apple, and I'll be the first one to admit. I mean, their stuff oh, yeah. is very pretty. I mean, yeah. this is very nice. <laughs> I, th <laughs> but, I think but, a lot of people are also lazy because I mean, you have all these Android devices, or you can just go with the iPhone, and there's a really clear upgrade path for the mm -hmm. iPhone. I yeah, think that's true. probably that's part yeah. of why. So yeah. people don't want choice to a certain extent, right? It's almost like choice overload. It definitely yeah. happens. Yeah. <laughs> we talk yeah. about that a lot on the show. Like people just have so many choices. So, um, where can we get more information about the port? How can we donate to your cause? Like, I want people giving you money. I want them throwing <laughs> cash at you left and right. Tell us oh, how too. we can find you on the internet and donate to what you're doing. Um, well, you can visit my blog, which is you know I'm going to update with the latest news about what I'm doing and what other people are doing on the project at linuxoniphone.blogspot.com. Um, you know, you can also, my PayPal donate link is there. You can also visit idroidproject.org and there's a really developing community there that are, you know, hacking the stuff that I, that I'm developing with some stuff that I haven't gotten to yet, yet. but, um, yeah, so just check out both websites. And very, very cool. And, uh, you can find, if you want to go check out David online, you can go to, as he said, you can go to Linux on iPhone dot blogspot dot is it com? Dot com, yeah. Dot com. And uh, and you can also find him on Twitter at Planet Being. Uh, David, thank you so much for coming on the show with us today, talking with us about your port. I mean, I think it's really amazing that uh, the things that you're doing and I I think I speak for everybody. Yep. It's yeah. pretty sweet. Yeah. Really, nice really stuff. impressive stuff. Awesome. So thanks so much for putting in all that hard work and, and really, you know, that's just I like I, I was so excited to have you on the show. When, it, when I got your email, I was just like, yes, I really wanted to talk to this guy. So thank you. I really appreciate having you on. And, uh, and I'm sure at some point we'll have you back on when you, uh, when you have successfully port Froyo over to iPhone 4. Oh, definitely. 
<laughs> Thanks for being on the show. Yeah. Bye. See ya. Well, that was pretty cool. That was pretty yeah. cool. Really, really neat. That was probably our nerdiest guest so far. Uh, yeah, for sure. I was, gonna, I, was, I was thinking that, too. I'm like, I'm like, you know what? This is probably going to be pretty dense for some of my, like, for some of our viewers who are just here to just check out, like, yeah. what's the app of the week? Like, I like, you know, I, I want to see what I can download from my phone. But, um, Man. But we gotta, we gotta, we gotta give credit where credits due. I mean, that's some amazing yep. stuff that's, that's going cool. on the show. So, I often wonder why iPhone developers who are like, yeah, I want to know everything about the iPhone. I want to unlock it. I want to put Android on it. Why aren't more of the hackers? Because there's such a huge hacking community for iPhone, like even bigger mm -hmm. than Android. And Androids is like, I know, because I have to hack this thing to be able to still use it. Right. Um, it's it's really big, but it's even bigger on iPhone. I wonder why more people don't just say, I'm just going to go with Android. Yeah. Well, and that's, if you and want that's to hack right. it for well, some of the f same features. Yeah. Well, there's kind of, I mean, there's different learning curves. You have to start back at zero. Yeah, that's true. Well, not zero, yeah. but, but it's still like, Linux. Well, yeah. I think it's like he said, well, though. It's like the Mount Everest. Linux. Like, you do it because it's, it's there. Mm -hmm. You do it for the challenge, and you do it because it's there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. it's, I, and I like that. Like, yeah. I like just, yeah, I'm going to do this because this is, like, probably one of the most difficult parts you can possibly do. <laughs> yeah. Like, And then he just did it. Like, mm -hmm. which is great. You spent the time and did it. Two years. That's ridiculous. That's, oh my gosh, it's so From much work. From start to finish. I mean, yeah. He that's, started when Android yeah. came out, and he just came that's out crazy. with the one for the 3G. That's a lot of work. Very, very crazy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, really briefly, I just want to bring up to everybody that if you're on AT&T, and uh, your contract is going to come up any time in the near future, uh, be afraid, because if you have a smartphone <laughs> and you upgrade, they have doubled the early termination fee for smartphones to $325, um, which is probably the ridiculous. craziest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. it's a little ridiculous. Especially, well, you know what it is. They're like, oh, when you come here, we just want to like basically force you into staying, and yeah. you, so that yep. once you realize what a terrible <laughs> network you're on, we can't, you can't leave. Pretty soon you'll be signing up for years of indentured servitude. Yes, yeah, well, at least right. it's not right. still. At least it's not as bad as Canada, where it's three years. Your yeah. contract's for three yeah. years, wow. which is crazy. So, um, but yeah, just so everyone knows, I mean, I know the Galaxy. Like, if you're looking at getting a Samsung Galaxy when it comes out, which is a very nice phone. Think about it. <laughs> like, I, just, I just want you to really know that you love that phone, and you are, and you love AT and T, which not very many people can say that. Yeah. So, um, just wanted to just wanted to throw that out there for you. <laughs> um, well, that's the end of our show. Like how uh, it went good. by so quick. That was a good one. I know it's already over. I know. Can you believe it? So, uh, first off, we we'll, we would love to thank profusely David Wang, uh, blogger, hobbyist, hacker. On Twitter, Planet Being, uh, thank you for all the hard work that you do. Thank you for coming on the show today. We really enjoyed having you. Uh, as always, Jeff, it's a pleasure. I made it. We, <laughs> d tell the nice people how they can find you on Twitter. Uh, at Jeff Ammons, one word. It's really creative. I know. <laughs> um, and uh, and then also Michael Levin, thank you so much for being our, our guest on Yay, the show today. My pleasure. And good. thanks, good questions. Yeah. Um, really fantastic. A lot of fun. A lot of and, fun. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah. Who, how can we find you on on Twitter? Michael underscore Ludden, L U D D E N on Twitter. Very cool. And uh, and you have plenty of hilarious, amusing yes. YouTube videos. Weird, sometimes weird. Be warned. <laughs> a little Feel bit weird. Feel free to follow me, and you will off. be entertained. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can find me, uh, Ashley Esqueda, on Twitter at my handle Android Ashley. Uh, if you are an app developer, if you are an app company, if you are a hardware company, if you're a carrier and you want to sponsor this week in Android, I'm not going to say I'm going to beg because <laughs> that would be beneath me, but. Come sponsor the show. Like we have a lot of fun, and we would love to promote your product. Like I, I, I really am dying to do like old timey commercials, like from <laughs> radio. Awesome. So can like, I bring yes. in like a mustache? That yes, you can have a. You absolutely <laughs> can have a Snidely Whiplash <laughs> mustache, and You'll actually probably grow one in a week. I, exactly. I just need like a few yeah. weeks. A couple week. days. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> you just yeah. need to sleep on it. That's yeah. it. I'll sleep on it and have it. It'll be great. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're interested, you can always. Um, drop us a line at thisweekend.com. Um, and we have other shows. So come check out our shows on thisweekend.com. We've got This Weekend iPad, This Weekend Cloud Computing, which is becoming huge. Um, this Week in Venture Capital, uh, This Week in Startups, This Week in YouTube, This Week in Twitter. I mean, we've got every kind of imaginable tech thing. And if we don't, we will in the future because yeah. we are expanding and it's going to be great. 
Um, but uh, that has been. Wait, this don't forget the most important one. What? Oh. Kevin oh. Pollock chat show. You're right. I always forget that one. I know. I always, I always have it like right there at the end, so it doesn't say this weekend. Yeah, I know. So I always miss it. I know. Um, and uh, but yeah, Kevin Pollock's chat show Sundays at three. Yeah. Streamy award winning. Streamy award winning. Whoa. Very fantastic. Yep. Whoa. Yeah, and he's, I mean, he's great. The interviews he gets, I, I mean, he's had like Kevin Smith on the show. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, he's had so many really cool guests. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank AndroidandMe.com for our news, our preferred news source. Um, There's they're some of my favorite people over there. Yep. So, and you weren't here last week for that, but yeah, like I, I love them <laughs> dearly. Um, <laughs> next week, we're going to. We're gonna go back to our app of the week, and we've got a we've got a good app next week. And uh, if you're into fitness, definitely come back and check it out. Um, but uh, as for us, that's been this week in Android. Have a great week.